Hey YouTube, this is Gohan from Dragon Ball Z. You're watching Amatu Ray Killer HD, the ultimate Super Saiyan. Hakai. Before we start the video, I just wanted to give a shout out to Zycor for letting me know about this team. Hey, what is up, guys? It is me, I'm a Tour Killer, bringing you a video on Dragon Ball Idol. In this video, we're going to be talking about a team that is going to obliterate all your opponents, and it only has technically about three to four weaknesses. Now, mind you, this game is set to counter, it's like a chess, chess game where Every team you make always has a counter. This is what makes this game very interesting. It's not where it's meta and you have to go for it. There are counters to it. You just need to know exactly who counters who. As per usual, please excuse the hair. The hair is fluffy, the hair is luscious, but we wanna get content out early in the morning so we can post it on the tube and get stuff ready. First and foremost, Leave a like on the video if you want to see more Dragon Ball Idol content. I am also playing Dragon Ball Legends on the side. Once I get a full understanding of the game, I will be posting content if you guys are interested. Uh, leave a comment if you guys want to see that. So the goal that you want to have for this AoE team, I don't know, it's going to be very difficult for some people. It is Kanik, Hakai Topo, Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks, Kefla, and Super Saiyan Blue Goku. Kefla, Goku, and Gotenks are all in Hero Rescue. Hakai Topo and Kanik are not. Now, Hakai Topo just recently is going to be added to the Hero Pick Pack, which means it's going to be, uh, I guess, just a regular uh, SSS picks, uh, where I believe Kanik is in the powerful one. Usually the powerful ones, they're, they're the newer units. So if anything, if you guys do have extra gems, I would wait for the event to have these packs to then to open these. If you guys don't have these two units, there is another way to do this team. It's going to be less effective. By less effective, we mean incorporating Hellas and Ice Dragon. Now, basically, Hakai Topo and Kana gives extra buffs to this team to make it a two-round killer. We're going to show you guys examples of this. When you start to incorporate Hellas and Ice Dragon, it's going to then deteriorate that two-round killer aspect of it and make it maybe like a three and a half to four round killer. Now, I don't know what three and a half means, but a definitely a four round killer uh, is a good way to put it. Now, mind you, you do not, you do not have a healer. You have three skill units. Two of them will be tanks. And one of them is gonna be associated with your healer. So if you're doing hero, reno, res, hero resonance to your healer, that means that your, I guess, I would do Hellas, is going to die quick. So your best bet would be doing this, uh, tank, tank, and just in case, maybe doing that. If you're not going up against the back row, then do this, so at least she's protected at the most. Normally, people want to see this team up against a 320 to start out, and we're going to incorporate it until we see against maybe like a 350, 360. Now, we were attacked, so I'm just doing examples of us being attacked and we're defending at the moment. Now, I put it on times one speed just to show you guys the speed aspect. Okay, so we have in speed relativity, we have Conic going first. All right, that's to do, you know, Ultra Instinct breaking that up. Goteng second to potentially stun if there is a Beerus on the other team. We got Hakai Topo third just to give that extra buff. And then we got Goku in the back going fourth to give off that extra damage at 70 plus HP. And then we got Kefla coming into the play and absolutely destroying the attackers and also removing those nice aura. Now, the Might of Angel, let's read it. After releasing the active skill, add three stacks of 5% damage increase to the target whose crit rate is greater than 20% for two rounds up to eight stacks. Now, what you can see from the fight that we had, we had both Kefla and Goku, they had eight stacks. So we already can see that. 
Also, Divine Enchantment, when the active skill is released, for every 20% of crit rate of the target, an additional layer of 5% damage increase will be added to the target. That's also a very good thing. This is a debuff to the enemy, giving them a damage increase taken on their side. So that means that we will be doing even more damage. Another thing is Holy Light Gather. The active skill dispels a buff of the enemy team and for targets with crit rate greater than 80% with 10% damage reduction lasts for two rounds. This is also a big plus, which means what? The, a, the damage dealers always have crit rate above 80%. So they're gonna be receiving a 10% damage reduction on top of all that good stuff. Secondly, we have Gotenks. He's going second. Now we all know that Super Donut triggers stun for one round and also reduces 19% damage for one turn. This is also a big plus. You're also giving off that debuff effect to the back row. A great thing about this is that his Halo gives our units 30% extra damage. That's going to buff up our AOE units like a buffet. We're gonna be taking in all those buffs. We got the damage reduction on the other side. We got the damage increase on our side. Now, thirdly, we have Hakai Topo, his destructive vision. When an enemy lands, when an attack lands a critical hit, the back row of the ally gains 20% crit rate plus 40% crit damage for two rounds up to two stacks. Now, this means what entirely? If we are able to get on the normal attack, a crit, and then on the skill, a crit, that means that our units will be getting a 40% crit rate plus an 80% crit damage increase because that means the two stacks are complete. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Fourth, we have Goku. I've tested this with Kepler going first and then Goku going second, but what I noticed is Goku does more damage when he is going first and then Kefla second because the enemies will be over 70% damage. Sometimes with Kefla going, sometimes they'll be like, say at like 65, 68, 70, 69, stuff like that. So he won't get his full benefit. Now, a great thing is that we need to look at is his passive skill energy shock. When the target is being attacked and has a debuff effect, increased damage by 20%. All of our three dudes are inflicting a debuff effect, which is going to definitely give us that 20% increase in damage. And then also his God passive, Pressurize, the target of the active skill, when the HP enemy is more than 70%, increase damage by 30%. So we're getting extra damage increase when this dude is attacking someone at 100 HP, which usually means what? Our, their damage dealers will be at 100, maybe at let's say like 90% because of all the effects that are happening, 95%, but still that is above 70%. He's going to be going ham beast mode to the damage dealers and then they're going to die. Now looking at the Kefla now going last, dual form combination, since we do not have an LSS on our team, she goes into the Khalifa personality, which means what? It's going to increase her skill damage by 20%. Us having Goku Super Saiyan Blue, we're already getting that nice little 20% increase to skill damage, which is gonna be doing even extra damage after everything has been hit. A beautiful thing about her is that Ray Blast disperses Aura. It destroys Aura completely and that means what? If you're going up against a team that has attack aura, defense aura, crit aura, her going last is definitely going to break the aura, but at least for round three and four, they're not gonna have it, which means ultimately we're going to either be doing more damage or receiving less damage. This is where the fun happens. When you go, this is where the fun happens when you go up against people that are 350, 340, 360, because now you get to see the full in-depth motion of this team. Now, we always want Hakai Topo to attack, all right? If he gets stunned or if anything happens to him, there's a big chance that we will potentially either win last minute or not win at all. So right off the bat, we see all these stacks. Goku going first, look at this. Gogeta is already at half, all right? Gogeta is at half. 
We also got Beerus close to half. Gogeta is dead. Myers is basically going to die because of erosion, but he's going to get his skill off, so he's going to heal. Uh, Beerus is basically there. So now all we have to really do is worry about getting off another AoE skill attack, and we won this match. This is why AoE is becoming more viable to the game, just because uh, more units with Focus Fire are in the, in the picture. Now, if you're going to be focusing on this unit, then Cell Max's Focus Fire gets hit and you have a single target, you're going to be going right to Cell Max for a few turns, and then Fu is going to regain health little by little because of the healer. Why not go into effect, have AoE teams, and go beast mode? I mean, for this one, we're going to have to wait an extra round, but we're just going to see exactly what happens. So for effect, Hakai Topo is going to be a nice little, uh, a nice little tank for us. One, two, three. Boom, boom, boom. A good thing about it is his phase attack for Goku works well against Beerus because the first one dodges and then the other two get hit, which is a perfect thing. Even against the strongest units, a full 360 team, this is against a guy that, you know, the community knows about as Lou. Um, this team is the same thing. Before we versed Hemikola, which is uh, from our uh, community, all together. But look at this all together. Look how much damage it does. Look at that again. Gogeta is basically dead. If we get this hit and kill him, boom, dead. Look at Myers. Myers is, well, he's going to get the heal off. I mean, if he didn't, he would have died. Uh, but Myers could have died from erosion. So now that this is going into effect, we have the focus fire. Our blue coup got stunned, which is unfair. Not unfair. It's unfortunate. But at least we know that we're going to get another kill. Now, there are counters to this team. The counters are people that have CC units. And we're going to go show you guys an example of this. Uh, CC units such as uh, such as Zamasu right here. Myers. Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks. Fat Boo and other units that cause a shit ton of CC, such as the Ice Dragon. Now, mind you, for this team, this is against Krisha, all right? Now, the only reason why we do have Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks is because of his Zamasu inflicting stun. We do not want stun to happen to our Hakai Topo because he's the one that's going to be giving us the most uh, beneficial buffs. We got the crit and the crit damage. Now, as you can see, round two, we destroyed their attacker and their healer because of our um, Dragon Fist. Now, what's going to happen next? We're going to be dominating his back row and destroying it completely. Now, if we replay this fight but have Hakai Topo in front, you are going to see exactly the different outcome. We have Zamasu that's going to attack ha Hakai Topo. He's going to stun him. We're not going to be getting the buffs, but you're going to see that round two is going to be slightly different. We'll just see an example about this. All right, so we got this. We got no stuns. We got this. We got that. Look at this. Round two. Well, I mean, Myers is almost dead. Still, the benefits are there. The benefits are still there. But when you start incorporating a team that does a full stun or fat boo that does his taunts or anything like that, we're going to be losing. Now, as you can see right here, this match might be a win because of RNG, but it also might be a loss because of RNG. If we don't get, if we, if he gets terrored and doesn't get the hits, or if he dies right away because of getting critted this whole time, it's a completely different state. Let's skip. We lost. Prime example. Why we want Hakai Topo to always attack. Even against a hybrid bleed AoE team, this team does very well against. Now, mind you, if we're going to be fighting a similar team that we have at the moment, the only way that it can beat us is if their speed is greater than ours. So that's the counter number two. So counter number one was CC. Counter number two was if AoE team is way faster than us. As you could see, for a fact, <laughs> People are dropping bodies. Round two, we already got Kefla dead. Vegito's basically dead. Now, we are going to be talking about Margarita's nerf alongside Quitella's nerf. That's the next video that we're going to be talking about. But against other AoE hybrids, 
we're going to be seeing a popular, popular uh, win rate with this. Now, this is another top dog that we're going to be fighting against. As you can see, for a fact, we're going to get demolished because we have that boo that we're going up against. He already taunted both Kanek and Hakai Topa, which is the people, the two units that we most desirably need. Um, Look at this. It's not going to do much damage. Now, yesterday in the live stream, if you guys were attending, we, I think his team had a different attack unit, which was, uh, no, no, a different defense. Who was the tank? It was either Omega. I think it might have been Omega. Omega or Evil Boo. If it is Omega, I think it was, we would have won completely because Taunt is not in the picture. So this is, a, that's that's where it comes into play. The first, the first counter is Fat Boo. Now, mind you, we first against multiple and different types of power of back row and we still won against it but once you see incorporate the first counter this team is a wash all right the third counter and it's only one unit super saiyan 4 gogeta if you have super saiyan 4 gogeta all right and you have the same exact team it will be a loss for you uh the reason why i say this is because kefla attacking gogeta will make it highly unlikely to win if and i haven't tested this yet if kefla is weaker in damage than uh than our goku i don't know if things are going to be slightly different where kefla is going to be maybe destroying the auras so that would be slightly better uh but we did not test this uh, the thing is, is that once Solo goes out of effect, you got Gogeta going crazy. And people always say, hey, why don't you run Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta instead of Blue Goku? The thing is, this wouldn't make it a two round killer. Um, with Gogeta, it would be maybe like a three to four round killer, depending on who you're going up against. But also with Gogeta, if you're going up against a Beerus or a Miracle Trunks, just know the odds are that you will die very fast. So that is the team that has three counters, CC units, AOE that is faster than the team that you have now. And the third one is only one unit, Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. Now there is a counter to Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, but you need to make sure he has a God passive and that is regular Topo. With regular Topo, he's going to be going into solo with Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. But that means that you're going to be replacing Hakai Topo. But overall, you're still going to win. It's not going to be a two-round killer, but it might be a four-round killer or even a five-round killer. And that is the video that I have for you guys. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Peace. Impressive.